Thomas Sedlacek, you're an economist at one of the biggest banks in Czechia and you're also a bestseller writer, uh, author of books about economics. Um, so um, how would you judge the action of Russia in the Ukraine and in the Crimea? Because uh, as a Czech citizen, uh, you have, uh, have a lot of experience with uh, the world power Russia, a former Soviet Union. So how would it charge uh, the action of the Russians? Well, here you can see how, how actually dangerous it is to be in somewhat of a no man's land between Russia and, let's say, European Union. I quite think that this, um, let's call it Ukrainian crisis, might actually test European values much more than the whole financial crisis altogether, because you can see that it's a much larger problematic. It's also a little bit annoying because we thought that this sort of a conflict is over. You know, when somebody comes with tanks to a strange country without being asked, we thought this sort of history is already past, and it isn't, um, which is, you know, somewhat annoying. Thirdly, you can see how, you know, Europe is sort of a, a fuzzy geographically. We don't know where we start, where we end, and also this is the way we Europeans evangelize the world. My third point is that um, while Europe is trying to look for this meaning, for the soul, for this purpose or narrative of Europe, uh, we are seeing the, the biggest um, desire for Europe, the biggest um, revolution for European values, and we see it outside of Europe. So here you can beautifully see the values of, of Europe, which we no longer see because we take them for granted. Being able to walk home without being afraid of being shot, being able to say whatever you want, uh, not having exit existential trouble is all that we take absolutely for granted and we deal with the very top bottoms of the solo um, uh, mas sorry Maslow Maslow pyramid and now we realize that there is even these sort of um, more earthly desires so I um, uh, I think we should thank the Ukrainians for giving us Europeans the meaning that we have lost because we have had too much of uh, you know, success in, in the past. So are we on the verge of a new Cold War? Uh, well, I think the Cold War got a little bit warmer. <laughs> I don't know whether it's, it's, it's good or it's bad. I don't think anybody wants an, an armed conflict. On the other hand, I think we should clearly open our arms to, to, um, to, to Ukrainians and make their speedy accession. Is Ukraine ready to be a member of European Union? No. Is European Union ready to accept Ukraine? No. But the countries that show looked to be most ready economically and politically and from the side of competitiveness was for example Ireland which became a huge troublemaker politically for refusing the uh, Lisbon Treaty and economically for sort of you know requiring the help of, um, of other countries contrary to that my region or my country which everybody including ourselves expected that we could be troublemakers we caused no trouble quite ironically quite surprisingly during the crisis no Czech bank needed a single penny from the government and if there was in other countries some mismatch we didn't need foreign help and nobody sort of had to solve our problems for us so in other words we have no good tests to see which country will cause trouble and which country will not cause trouble you can see that Poland with you know there were huge question marks suddenly is in a way positioning itself as a sort of a leader of, 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 of Europe and um, and it's an impressive it's an impressive force so I would not be <clears throat> afraid at all to extend this welcome uh, to Ukrainians as soon as possible not as soon as they're ready so another question is uh, which also uh, you know concerns the financial markets um, has Russia stopped now in uh, the Ukraine and or does Russia have other you know um, uh, ambitions to to go some uh, anywhere else in in that region uh, with 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 armed armed forces well of course difficult to see the future is as master yoda says but um, you could see glimpses of that remember when czech republic and poland under george w bush we were supposed to build that anti-missile defense system russia was very vocal that they don't want it there this is our sovereign land, we can do whatever we want there and we don't need to consult this with nobody, especially not with Russia. But uh, the comments we got from, from some Russian representatives was, um, how would you feel if somebody had a sexual intercourse with your wife? 
to which we said, but we're not, you know, we're not your wife. You raped us once, but we're not your wife. So to us Czechs, what's happening in Ukraine, it reminds us a little bit of what happened in 1968. So maybe my view is overcritical, but because of our history and because of our experience with this force, it's, um, it's sort of um, um, power that one must respect. And you can see that they still use a little bit different logic than we are used to.